from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Kutz. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Josephine and family from San Jose, California, in loving memory of their mother, Catalina T on the first anniversary of her passing today and for other deceased family members. The second is Vanessa Dimitriou from Bronx, New York, in loving memory of her mother, Olga Fotos, who would have celebrated her birthday today. The third is an anonymous donor from East York, Ontario, for the intentions of her relatives, especially her nephews and her nieces, and their families and for the deceased family members. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we have God telling us that no matter how much we have sinned, there is always hope to turn away from sin again and again and yet again to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, O Lord, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. If the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. For the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn away from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin they have committed, they shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again. When the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life, because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of 
the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them. I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said, to those of ancient times you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. If you insult a brother or sister, you are liable to the council. If you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So then, when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to the court or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> As I read that first reading today, it sounded like two children fighting God and people of Israel. Is your way unjust? Do you say my way is unjust? It's your way that is unjust. Two children fighting. I did it. No, you didn't. Did so. No, you didn't. And the decibel level keeps on going up as 
No evidence is proved, nothing is uh, shown, but just you did and you didn't, and it goes on. But Ezekiel, the writer of the book of, of Ezekiel, uses this technique <clears throat> to explain a common reality that was believed in his time. And what was that reality? The reality was that if I sinned, then my sin would be punished not only on my children, my grandchildren, but to the third and fourth generation. And Ezekiel wanted to say to the people, that is not so. The point is, we still believe that today. Because of my sin, my children are suffering. In 1974, I was working at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish. I had just been recently ordained, and I was working as a chaplain in Princess Margaret Hospital on Wellesley Street, which has been torn down now. And I was put in charge of the cancer ward, especially of children and teenagers. And very often, in the middle of the night at 2, 3 in the morning, I could watch from my room right into the cancer ward, and I'd see parents there with the children. These would come there absolutely looking beautiful, everything be wonderful, and 2, 3 weeks, they would look like old, haggard people who has the cancer at into them. Very often I'd go down at two and three in the morning and sit with the children, allow the parents to go for a cup of coffee, to have a little respite. And I would read comics books and stories to the children to keep them going because they couldn't keep, they couldn't fall asleep. But the thing that I heard so often and really got me very upset was so often the parents would say, you know, it's because of my sin that my child has got leukemia. Because of my sin, this child is sick. We did not get married. We had premarital sex. We did not baptize the child, and therefore it is sick. And I wanted to shout, no, no, no. God does not take any delight in punishing people, as we heard in Ezekiel. I didn't come here to condemn people to death, but I want them to live. But it's so difficult to get out of that mentality. And what God is saying, Ezekiel is saying to the people of Israel, look, you keep the Torah, you listen to the Torah, you keep the commandments, you keep the covenant, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed with health, with wealth, and uh, prosperity over your enemies. But there has to be a consistency. It is not like, as we go to college in our, our universities today, to graduate, I need 40 credits. I can do 25 credits, then take a break for five, six years, come back and do the remaining 15 credits and graduate. All the credits that I had before count. And Ezekiel is saying, no, it does not count. Because you have lived a good life all the while, and at the last moment you decide to sin, all the good life that you have done before do not count as credits. There has to be a consistency in the way you do things. Similarly with the sinner. If the sinner has done a life that is on the wild side, that has sinned all his life, but at the last moment he decides he's going to turn away from sin and turn towards God, he shall live. This is not the way we think of in our courts today. If a person is brought before a court, they bring up all his or her past sins, or, you know, if they've lived outside the law all the time, they've been in and out of prison, they bring that up and they say, well, what else can he do? He should be thrown in jail. God does not work like that. And that is why God's ways are not our ways. God has given us hope that we can sin and sin and sin again, but if we turn away, we will be saved. God doesn't want us to sin, but God always gives us that opportunity. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Remember when I was in Guyana, I, there was a man who was really living a wild life, fraud, in jail, out of jail, everything, and. One day, while he was coming home from work, he was knocked down by a car. And when I went to the hospital, he made a full repentance of his entire life. 
He says, I've been a fool. I have hurt so many people. I've committed so many sins, but I am truly sorry. And at his funeral, I kept on saying, this man is going to go to heaven. And at that time, somebody came and says, you know, you Catholics have got a good gig. You know, all you do can do what you like, and then last moment you can change your mind and say, I'm sorry. I said, but will you want to take that opportunity of living on the wild side, never knowing when you're going to die? And Jesus picks up with the same theme in our gospel today. He speaks about murder, he speaks about adultery, he speaks about stealing, and he says, I am asking you to take it to a higher level. Not only not to do these things, but also to avoid all the occasions that lead you to do all these things. Jesus is calling for a whole change of mind and heart, a metanoia, a change of mind. And the opposite of metanoia is paranoia. And you know what paranoia is. Confusion, chaos, and all sorts of things that lead to lack of peace. If it's that a change of heart, that metanoia, then we too can look at things the way God looks at things. And then we can turn away from sin, have a change of heart, and turn to God. God bless you all. Let us pray for our needs and intentions, for all those in the daily televised Mass, for the TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intention book, especially those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, that they may find relief and healing through Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for our leaders within our church and in our civil society, as they take care of the marginalized, the poor, and those who are left on the fringes of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a mentality that changes, a mentality that is like God, of loving kindness towards people and even towards ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocation to priestly and religious life, to the lives of deacons, for married couples, and for singles within our faith community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we ask you to listen to our prayers and to give us the grace to have a change of heart, a heart which is like the mind and heart of Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise the glory of His name, for our good and of all His holy Church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which, in your power and kindness, you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For by your gracious gift, each year your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Olga Fortos and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, <coughs> with our Canadian martyrs, Jean de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, kingdom, the, power. the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us, restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of our old ways, take up the mystery of salvation. Look upon your, with favor on your people that their observance, what they are observant outwardly declare, may inwardly bring about through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.